Welcome back, everybody. Yagmoth the Rogue here. I'm going to be two man hunting with my Whis friend Zeron. We're going to be in the new hunting area tab lead because there's a double experience event going on, and then we're going to use a double experience item as well to get four times the experience. The goal is to hunt over 4.2 billion experience in one hour. I sped the video up to two times speed to keep it somewhat interesting. I used a webcam so you guys can see what the rotations are like for being a pure rogue. You'll notice I go through a variety of tactics including control double right click auto attack while using star arrow on other creatures. I have frost on volley to help keep us alive during large pulls and to immobilize the dagger creatures and the spear creatures so that they don't move so I can hit them with rainer strike and assassin strike. I primarily try to use skills on the dagger and spear enemies because they have or can cast spell immunity. The mages do not, so I primarily try to target them down with Star Arrow. I'm having the Weast only really cast Ard Crad because that's all I need and keeps things moving at a pretty good pace. Considering that I can almost one shot everything here to begin with, Ard Crad makes it so that I can for sure one shot everything. You will also notice that I try to pull mages into larger groups and I'll move ignoring some mages trying to kill some of the dagger and lancers. The goal is that I want to keep rear strike and assassin strike and my other skills on cooldown as much as possible and then use auto attacks and star arrow while those are on cooldown. Daggers and spear guys give more experience and AP than the mages. So they're more of a priority target, unless there is a large cluster of mages, then the large cluster of mages are a priority target. Either recently or while two manning, daggers are definitely a less aggressive. So I have started to use volley, frost arrow to immobilize them to line up my rear strikes. And I try to miss as little as possible, but due to certain types of lag and stuff that is unavoidable sometimes. Uh, I'm still not the greatest at not missing my rear strikes, but I'll get better with practice. The reason I'm preferring to use Frost Arrow on Volley is because Volley is instant cast and Frost Arrow is one line. So using it on Volley makes an instant cast spell and an AoE, which is very useful. Now Volley is something that only pure rogues can do. Uh, so this is not viable for non-pure rogues. You'll have to manually cast Frost Arrow. And you'll see me manually cast Frost Arrow from time to time when my volley is on cooldown and I need to immobilize one of the creatures for uh, rear strike. The only downside to volley is that volley is affected by magic resistance, whereas Frost Arrow is not. So Frost Arrow on volley will be affected by magic resistance, so it's not 100% guarantee that it will hit everybody. Also, it's not a viable target to volley on yourself or another Assling because it will just not work, but it will go on to cooldown. So you'll want to make sure that you volley on a creature. If you notice my thumb, I'm tapping spacebar and casting star arrow at the same time so I can melee the creature in front of me while casting star arrow on the mage. I press spacebar and then I press the three click and then I press spacebar and then I three click. I try not to spam the buttons at the same time because they don't register as well with the server due to possibly inputting too many commands at one time. So it's best to kind of alternate quickly between them. Also, you may or may not have noticed that I f 9 myself before the hunt. This cancels my attack animations and allows me to attack and then move quickly or attack and then turn to attack another target very quickly. The only downside is that I cannot see what I type or I cannot see the blue bars above my character's head, but I can see anything I type into party chat. But my ally can see anything that I type regardless of the fact that my chat bubble will not appear above my head. 
I don't use any macros while speed hunting like this because they take away from my ability to adapt to situations that can get kind of hairy. I'd rather be able to be spontaneous and use any skill at any time given the situation. I do understand that this requires a lot of actions per minute and not everybody is capable of that, so macros are helpful for those people. Oh yeah, one last note, I'm sure you guys have noticed that the timer in the upper right is reading zero. I actually had two timers open and I didn't know about it, and the wrong one was on OBS. So I had a timer going and it was going to be all cool and stuff, but OBS captured the wrong one. Oh well, I don't know how to edit videos well enough to fix it, so hopefully it's not too annoying to look at. That's pretty much it for my strategy here, so just hang back, relax, and hope you guys enjoy the music. The music is provided royalty free by Hook Sounds at hooksounds.com and Ben Sounds at bensounds.com. Thank you guys very much for the music. Links will be in the description below if you guys want to check them out.
Shut up and sit down. And it looks like we reached our goal with some time to spare. Now even though we can't get experience, we're going to finish out our double because Xeron is not yet max ability level yet. So we're going to just finish out his double, getting as much ability points as possible so that he can maybe get closer to that max level. And it looks like that wraps up our hunt. Thank you guys for tuning in. Like, comment, and subscribe. Links will be in the description below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.